Jacobs. Good morning, McGraw. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Let's talk about this uh, derelict who wants to open up a halfway house. Why, how dare he want to open up a halfway house? Uh, yeah, how dare this psychiatrist in South City want to open up a halfway house to help make sure that people let out of prison don't go back to prison and and help follow up with the follow up the rules? No, this sounds is, like a great idea. What, what's the problem? It is a great idea. It is. This is where a psychiatrist in South City wanted to reopen a portion of, a, I think it's Alexian Brothers Hospital. So it was an institution. This is impor- important for zoning purposes. Right. And he wanted to use some of the empty space for beds for a halfway house, which was where people paroled from federal prison would be able to, you know, check in, spend spend the night, mm-hmm. do all the things they have to do while on on probation or parole. Right. And of course, the neighborhood and the aldermen just went just went crazy. And he so he's pulling his request, saying that he's gotten no cooperation. From the city. This is the city that's happy to shovel corporate welfare to to whoever they whoever <laughs> asked for it downtown or, or, or Washab. But no, you want to you want to actually put up your own money to do to do a psychiatric institution or a halfway house for people who need help. And the alder the alder woman is pushing back. She he says he's getting no help, and the opposition's been very strong. You know, she's saying in the Post Dispatch article she's saying that's not true, but in a prior article she was. Alderwoman Spencer was quoted as saying she didn't think it, the the project fit into the neighborhood. Yeah, but I don't want. So I sort of believe the psychiatrist. But I don't want all of these um, ex cons hanging around my neighborhood in this halfway house. Well, we're right. Well, that's that's the that's the constant problem we we see when we've talked about this issue so many times. Be it a small home for for orphans in Brentwood, which gets rejected, or, right? Or God forbid, Daryl Strawberry wants to. Put in a, a drug or alcohol rehab center in an institu- in a closed institution in Maryland Heights. Where are th- these things supposed to go? When you find empty institutional buildings, they're not putting this in single-family neighborhoods. Right. right. You know, it's an empty hospital in South City that's just sitting there. It's obviously designed for large amounts of people to come. Mm-hmm. Now maybe they were sick people as opposed to people out on on parole but where are these people going to be treated when you're just constantly saying no they have to be they have to be moved out you can't do that here i i loathe nimby so much and we see it we see it all over the country with the fragmentation we have in st louis i think we probably see it even more frequently here all right that's the one thing you're railing on the other one is um What's this uh, high ri- or uh, uh, high end luxury condos in Clayton? I thought that would be perfect. Well, this is a this is it's come back. It's an area we've talked about before. It's the closed Maryland School, much like Alexian Brothers, a closed institutional building. Mm-hmm. Maryland School has been closed for 30, 35 years, and it's just sitting there at Jackson and Maryland in Clayton. And it was used for a daycare center for a while, but now it's totally empty. And some developers want to, God forbid, put in 25 luxury townhomes in this area. Because who would ever want to live next to, you know, three-quarter of a million-dollar townhomes? I As mean, opposed to a go- building that's been sitting empty. Right. There goes the neighborhood. And to the best of my knowledge, they're not asking for any subsidies, which is a, quite a rarity these days. And you know what? If they did, I'd say approve the project, deny the subsidies. Right. But, but here they are. And the neighbors who have been using this, and I live very close to here, so I'm going to upset people probably who I know. <laughs> you know, they've been using the school playground as a neighborhood park for 30 years. They want it to continue as a park, but it's not a park. It's a closed school, and the school district wants to sell it. And and the great thing that comes from this is instead of an empty lot paying no taxes, you'll have 25. You know, three quarter million dollar, maybe a little less, maybe a million, maybe a little more. Townhomes paying significant taxes to the city and the school and the county. That's how we expand our tax base, and it's very frustrating seeing the seeing the the community being able to shut down a project that the developers should have every right to move forward with. So you let's explain this. This was already rejected once. And the developers coming back again to to try and resurrect the project. They are, and they've reduced the number of, of townhomes, and they have, to their credit, listened to some of the concerns of the the neighborhood and tried to address it. And instead of, I think, the first round was 48, and this is a very big lot. Okay, it's a school, uh, the the soccer field that came with it. Right. Instead of 48 attached townhomes, now they're going to go with about 25, and so they've tried to address concern to the neighborhood. 25 townhomes is not going to provide some sort of crazy traffic that all of a sudden it's going to be, you know, mm-hmm. you know, 
Death Death Valley here, right. trying with cars going back and forth on kids. I mean, it's just twenty five new homes, single family. So ha- has that be been, has that been rejected, or is that up to be rejected? It was rejected about a year ago, and now they're coming back before the Clayton Planning and Zoning Board. And I hope that again, this, the Planning and Zoning Boards, in my opinion, have just gone way too far. It's we forget about the property rights of people who buy and own. This land and this psychi- whether it's the psychiatrist in South City <laughs> who merely wants to put together a halfway house to help people in right. a closed hospital, or these developers in Clayton who want to take a closed school and actually expand the tax base of Clayton and St. Louis County significantly, and for neighbors to be able to stop, they have all the power now. Stop and say, no, we don't want it. You can't do it. Despite the fact that they don't really have any good reasons <laughs> to, in either place to present this, other than we don't want it. And all their complaints... The smoke screens that they are, of <laughs> traffic, or cons- it's all just, we don't want that in the area. <laughs> and for some reason, the property rights of people who want to buy and, and develop this land has totally been forgotten about. Yet they will have to get government approval for everything. Yet they will turn around and uh, complain about the size of government. <laughs> right, r- exactly, exactly. Or, or the, don't or tell government what to do. Hey, tell that guy n- not to do that over there. R- right, <laughs> don't tell me what to do. Let's tell them what to do. And also, let's not approve this development that's not asking for a tax subsidy because we like that development a little bit farther away, and they can have whatever tax subsidy they well, want. Well, that's and a we'll good talk point. talk about that next week. Your point is that Clayton has already approved uh, subsidies for a high-rise luxury condo tower and yet won't approve this luxury condo with no subsidies. To the, again, to the best of my knowledge, no subsidies. And right. I'll repeat, if they ask it, mm-hmm. it's how I felt about the, the Maryland, I think it's the Maryland Walk on the, in the southwest corner of Clayton. Good project. Approve it. They're asking for enormous subsidies. Reject those. These, these things don't have to go hand in hand. You can say you're ready to do it. We're not going to give you any money. Take your own risk. Earn your own reward. I wish you the best of luck. Go forward with the project. You don't get a dollar of taxpayer money. Yet somehow that idea in local government in, in the St. Louis region is just is just a mind-blowing idea that you could move forward with developments without subsidies. Make sure you take your blood pressure medicine before you read Tony Messenger's column today. I will, I will do that. Because it talks about how Judge Elman is trying to stop these developments in floodplains and that he's, done, he's figured out that he's seen that there are some of these buildings that are built in floodplains that are worth $130,000 and yet have gotten $400,000 to rebuild every single time there's a flood. Well, uh, I mean, Steve Elman is, an, is a terrific county executive, and he has been doing – he's been fighting – the, the TIF and subsidy abuse as long as anybody in this region. Right. And I've, I've, I've talked with him about it. We, we feel the same way about it. And I can't wait to get down and read Tony Master's column. It's today. a pretty well, pretty good story. All right, David Stokes from the Show Me Institute. When can we read you? When can we see you? We've got a lot of information up on these issues and about property rights and zoning. It's all at showmeinstitute.org. Please check it out if, you're, if you haven't checked it out before. Have a good, good day. Thanks, McGraw. Have Thanks, Kelly. One. David Stokes, 845 KTRS. Talked about Stewart's American Mortgage. Stewart's American Mortgage. In honor of John Carney. Stewie! And also in honor of John Carney, I won't make fun of the fact that it's zero closing costs. Uh, Stewart at Stewart American's Mortgage. When you call him, he'll come to where you are. He'll check out your house. He'll go to your coffee shop. He'll meet you at work, whatever it may be. And he'll sit you down and explain to you everything there is to know about your refinancing, your credit card debt, whatever it may be. He'll then get you a great rate and get you to the finish line. But what Stewart at Stewart's American Mortgage does that I haven't seen anybody else do is that he will not charge you any closing costs. He told me the other day here on the show that he found someone who had $10,000 in hidden fees. Now, they didn't even know it. He had to explain to them where those $10,000 in hidden fees were. At Stewart's American Mortgage, when you go there, there are no closing costs. It's the bagel loan. Don't be fooled. Stewart's American Mortgage, 25-plus years in the business. When you work with him, you work with him and him alone. 314-324-4440. That's his personal cell phone. It's not an 800 number. You're not going to be rerouted to somebody else. You work with Stewart and Stewart alone. 314-324-4440. No closing costs. What are you waiting for? Stewart'sAMC.com. News flash for anyone suffering with sleep apnea who uses a CPAP system. SoClean.com is offering a 30-day in-home trial of the world's first and only automated CPAP cleaner and sanitizer.
This special opportunity is available on a strict first-come, first-served basis. To stop cleaning your system by hand, try the world's first and only automated CPAP cleaner. Risk-free for 30 days. Call immediately 1-800-500-5403. SoClean is scientifically proven to destroy 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs, viruses, and bacteria. It's completely hands-free and hassle-free, and it works in minutes. No need to take apart your system or use any water. To introduce this life-changing breakthrough to the world, SoClean.com is offering risk-free trials to anyone who calls in the next 10 minutes. To stop washing your CPAP system by hand, try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. Call 1-800-500-5403. This is an exclusive radio offer and supplies are limited. That's 1-800-500-5403. Join KTRS for the first annual Heart and Soul Dueling Piano Event, Saturday, February 6th at the Caramel Room at Bissinger's. You can't go wrong this Valentine's Day. A night out with your sweetheart, all while helping heal the hearts of Cardinal Glenn. Five seconds. Tickets, visit Glenn